So then we know that diversity and inclusion, it's been a hot topic these days. And for some companies, it's just a checkbox. There's nothing, yes, we hire diverse people, but we're not asking them to include or we're not inclusive in our decision making. So what tips do you have for employers to be more inclusive in terms of DEI? I think that is the question right now. And the reason I say that is not because... And I hate I hate it when I hear people say like it's you know it's trending or you know it's the, all these all these comments that diminish what's actually trying to be achieved here. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I think it's the most important question is because we've never been in a better position to be able to hire the top talent in the market, mm -hmm. and the top talent in the market is often the people that think differently from those who are already in your organization. Yes. I've worked in multiple organizations where we had a predominant group. Yeah. And um, and I say this, and I'm very cognizant of saying this, as a straight, white, able-bodied male, that mm. puts me in the, probably in the box seat for in terms of employment for the last, well, for all of time. Um, and, and one of the things which I, I've seen is absolutely huge right now is companies are not going to change the way they think if they keep replicating their hiring habits. Yeah. And they keep hiring from the majority set. So the piece that I've always said is look at who you have hired already. Yeah. And then work out how you diversify that pool of thought. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, right, we need different thinkers. The way you get different thinkers is you bring people in from different backgrounds, different locations, different geographies, different schools. Yeah. And the result of that is that you will get a um, group of humans which are now of diverse origin from an ethnicity, a gender, and every other point of view. Yeah. Um, I also think that the reason it's a massively important conversation is because visible diversity versus um, non-visible diversity mm -hmm. should be more talked about. Yeah. And as we progress and people's understanding grows, understanding elements such as neurodiversity mm -hmm. is absolutely critical to truly, again, diversifying and finding top talent. Yeah. Um, and it, it, for me, it's it, it's when you can when you can look at that and say, now we have a group of individuals who are going to challenge the way I think as a leader, mm -hmm. and are going to challenge the way we think as a company. Now you're in a healthy place. Yeah, because that's that melting pot of ideas which we're actually all looking for. Because if you if you want to change your bottom line, because I think this is the other side of diversity that people don't like to talk about. It's the diversity is a priority until the bottom line gets in the way. Yes. And the fascinating part and the most misunderstood part of that for me is that your bottom line will increase more with diverse, mm -hmm. challenging thought in your organization. So if you actually want to change your bottom line, start thinking about different people to bring in. It comes back to the topic we talked about earlier, but in terms of value alignment, in terms of, again, there's another topic, which is culture fit versus culture ad. They want culture ad, they want diversity and inclusion, but they are afraid to bring these people from different backgrounds because as you mentioned, maybe they hired a lot of, let's say, again, for from one you from one diverse people and they feel that there will be clash. And but then they keep hiring mini me's and then they wonder why there's no creativity, there's no uh, growth in some companies. Yeah. So again, this it, and it's such a it's such a big topic. Yes. And I think so many people get awkward talking about this mm -hmm. because when you break it down and you start looking at your company's ratio of employees, yeah. and for want of a better word, people get that icky feel. Um, now, one of my favorite moments in my career was, uh, and I've alluded to this before, my, uh, my LinkedIn tagline is creating opportunity um, for diverse populations. Um, and I remember walking into a one-on-one -on -one at one of the companies I worked for, and um, my new my new team member who I was sitting there, she looked at me and she said, "So all I want to know is, are you full of shit?" And I was like, <laughs> "I'm sorry, what? What is? Okay, I'm like, I like you already. This is a great question." Um, and I was like, "What do you mean?" And she's like, "Well, I read your LinkedIn tagline. And I want to know is it trendy or is it real?" Mm -hmm. And I loved that because we were actually in a real conversation straight away. Yes. And I think more people need to forget their, the, the awkwardness that they bring to this topic yeah. and actually have the real conversations. Yeah. Because when you start looking at skill sets, mm -hmm. 
that oftentimes you can find that there are incredible skill sets across demographics. Yes. And if you actually just look for skill sets, then that's very real. Now, the second piece that I would say to that, and I think what often gets forgotten, is there are certain demographics. I mean, I spend a lot of time in the US. Yeah. There are certain demographics that do not have the educational privileges that others do. And again, I'm sitting here as a privileged white male who has grown up in great education. Not everybody's like that. And we have facilities in Baltimore, for instance, mm -hmm. where education is a lot harder to get to because of um, the, well, the amount of people that grow up in, basically in poverty. Um, however, there are brilliant, brilliant people in those populations. And I believe it's our job as employers to mm -hmm. create pathways that people who don't have the traditional background, so have that non-linear approach to the way they've grown up, the way they, they've built a career, and look for the best people there as well. Yeah. So like, from a practical perspective, step outside of the safe, the yes. I'm going to hire somebody who comes from one of our competitors, went to the right schools, because the right schools is your fit piece again, right? Yeah. Look for somebody that comes from a different place and has achieved a lot or has the potential to achieve a lot from a different background. Because I think they're the people that are gonna surprise you. And look, my tra my career is not traditional. You know, I spent time I spent time in the ski industry, for goodness sake, and now I'm sitting here running a people and culture department. Yeah. Um, and in between there, I've worked for three of the biggest companies in the world in their respective fields. Yes. Um, now, a lot of people could look at me and say, he doesn't have that straight linear background, but I'd like to think I bring a lot to the companies that I work for, yes. and my career seems to be going in the right direction. Yes. So. Go out there and look outside the traditional, I want somebody with three, five-year jobs to give a 15-year career after the right degree and the right master's. Like, that's great. Find the best one of the ones of those. But then go and find your left field candidates and bring them into the picture and show the hiring manager what potential is out there. Yeah. Those are great tips. And thank you very much. Again, for the audience, if you have any other tips in terms of DEI, please leave them below. And tune in next time for my final question with them.